guys. Uh, this is Sam Craig. Um, this is my studio. Um, I built this just uh, a few years ago. This room is 20 feet by 24 feet. I designed this myself. Um, I subbed out some of the work. The, I had to build put in a driveway so I could get materials down to it. And then um, uh, I sucked out the uh, driveway and the foundation and uh, the framing, the roof, the blown insulation in the ceiling. And uh, then I hired a, uh, a carpentry friend of mine and he and I did everything else. I found this article in um, a fine home building. And it's called Creating a Sealed Crawl Space. If you want your room to be your uh, crawl space underneath to be dripping with water off the insulation under the floor, then uh, that's the traditional way. But they, they came up with this new system, and what I did was I, I glued two layers of foam board to the walls of the insulation of uh, the uh, foundation underneath. Uh, what we did here was I put a couple of uh, registers on the floor uh, that go down underneath. So. And then I drilled one hole through the uh, uh, frame underneath, about this big, and I put a, uh, a small um, a fan down there that is controlled by humidity. So there's blow it's blowing air out, out from the uh, crawl space through that hole. Oh, I made two mistakes. The first was when I installed the thing, I was busy up here doing construction that I forgot about it and didn't turn the fan on. So after a couple of weeks, uh, every, all my joists downstairs got wet, so I had to put some fans down there to dry everything out, which only took a couple of days because there was no insulation under the floor to trap that moisture. It took me a while to figure out that this room is so sealed that the fan is pulling air out of this room, but there's no air coming into the room. So it was putting a strain on the motor the fan motor and it burned out the unit. So now I have to leave a window cracked and <laughs> just to circulate air. So it's working very well and I just love it. And over here I've put out some of my more recent pieces, stuff that you haven't seen before. A fossil of this critter was found just a couple years ago and uh, I decided to carve one from a artist's rendering of what what he looked like, and uh, and that's really the the only piece that I've carved from a, like a solid block of wood. Most of my carvings are very much the design is very much uh, uh, left up to the mother nature. These pieces are all cherry burls here. Uh, this one is uh, is called Goddess, uh, and it's it really common with with cherry burl that you'll have this recessed area and the burl was all around it. Um, so I, I probably spent 25 hours just doing the hair on this guy, on this lady. This one is a piece of cherry burl that I just, uh, I just uh, shaped all of these uh, sort of rounded stuff on it. Um, and then here's another one that, uh, that has that recessed area I was counting down. I left this one pretty much uh, very rough. Very rough. What I love about these burls is that uh, I, I never know what the piece is going to wind out, wind up being, because a piece of cherry burl starts out looking like this. <clears throat> I use a chisel to uh, to just remove a lot of the uh, the, uh, the 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 rotted stuff and. Uh, and so you can see how, how it changes so much from this to one of these. Um, I, well, I've, I've uh, collected interesting pieces of wood for many, many years, hoping to get around to, to carving one day. Uh, also, I have five acres of, uh, uh, of four, four of my five acres are, are wooded, so when I'm out there cutting firewood, I'm always looking for interesting pieces. And then uh, some of these have been given to me by friends who know that uh, I like to work in Cherry Grill, so a lot of people give those to me. I, I really love these, you know, 
most most of these birds that you can buy, they they're very slow. They 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 don't move uh, remove a lot of uh, of wood very quickly. But boy, these do. These are wonderful. I love these. I, I use these almost exclusively exclusively now. They, they they cut extremely well and they leave a leave a very smooth finish. So there's very little sanding that has to be done. I've been buying some stuff from this company called Arbor Tech. This is called their mini grinder. It's a, it's a grinder that is uh, that is designed with this this narrow extension here, so you can get into tight places with it. And it's got it's got this cutter here with two blades on it. You know, if if you're a carver, you you quickly find that removing wood, getting getting rid rid of all the stuff that you don't want, is is like eighty percent of what you're going to do. I try to remove as much as I can with the bandsaw, and if the piece is too big and it won't fit in there, sometimes I'll use an, uh, an electric chainsaw to, to, to cut away big chunks. And then, uh, and then I go to these Arbor, Arbor Tech tools. Here's another Arbor Tech tool. This is just a regular grinder that you may have, but it's got this blade. This is called a turbo blade. It's got three cutters. And uh, this, this is a great tool. I use it all the time. And, uh, and you can do some very uh, delicate work with it or you can remove a lot of stuff very quickly. I have to wear a glove on my right hand because these tools throw wood chips at a great rate of speed and they, they blast into my hand unless I felt them do it. Here's, here's what I love using this for because these tools will throw dust and wood all over the shop. So using this helps uh, concentrate. Great for like uh, carving out a large bowl or a tray or just carving a uh, the seat of a chair, the shape, the curved shape you would want in. This would be the perfect tool. Super duper cutter. Uh, it's carbide where the others are. And they're real easy to sharpen. And this costs about $260. This turbo cutter costs about $160. They're a little expensive, but sure well worth it. This guy, too, which goes onto the, the grinder as well, and it's got three cutters. And each cutter is set with an Allen, Allen screw, and the cutters are circular. So it, when it gets dull, you can, lose, you can just turn the cutter to a different position. So it, it won't be completely dull until you've 
you've cut all the way around. You know, I just I, I go after everything that's uh, that's that's rotten, that's uh, that that just needs to be removed. So uh, I I don't really know what shape is underneath. So. Uh, so, you know, once I do that, I'll end up with a piece that, that looks a lot like this one. And then, and then I'll get, go back to the, uh, the grinders if I, want, if I want something like this. And, you know, that, that turbo cutter will make all of this. And, uh, and, and, and it gets, gets it right down very close to what I, to, to the sanding. The sanding is not, is not a, a, a huge operation. So, you know, I'm just trying a lot of different uh, textures for what the finished piece would look like. I started out in the trades. I, I started out as a car carpenter building houses, and then I went to cabinet making, and, uh, and then I apprenticed with a woodworker for a while, for about a year, I guess. Uh, my background is in professional theater, and I did a lot of freelance work at, at several of the professional theater companies around, Shakespeare and and Barrington Stage. My wife, who was a teacher at the time, she's retired now, but she's still working almost full time tutoring students. In theater, theater, the theater season is very, very strong and busy during the summer. So we weren't spending a lot of time with each other. So she finally said, look, why don't you just retire from theater? And, uh, and that's when I started picking up the woodwork, the art something I've always wanted to do.